Hallelujah. Lift your holy hands. Father, thanks a million for the great privilege you give us today. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated. Now, today I want us to look at one of the most important seeds that you can ever sow in your life. Amen. Turn with me to Luke chapter 17 because it's a year of seed time and harvest and um, we are learning that many things are seeds. And today, just as a short Bible lesson, I want to share with you about the seed of Luke chapter 17 and verse 6, the seed of faith. Amen. Seed of faith. Many people don't know that faith is a seed. Luke 17 and verse number 6, it says, And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed so if you have faith of, if you take away the mustard alright you have faith like a seed do you see if you had just a seed of faith if you had just a seed of faith you might say to this sycamore tree be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you alright Matthew chapter 17 (laughs) and Jesus verse 20 and Jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for I say unto you if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed so if you have faith like a seed if you have faith like a seed You shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Remove what? Hence to yonder place, and it shall what? Remove. (laughs) It shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, I want to propose to you that faith is No, not a proposal of marriage. (laughs) It's a proposal of the word. Oh, yes. Now, I want to propose to you that faith is the biggest force and power that is available in the world today. All right? Now, why do I say so? Because even as Russia has invaded Ukraine, there is a lot of talk about nuclear weapons. And during the Potsdam conference that was between Joseph Stalin, Roosevelt, and um, Churchill, the three powers that drove out Hitler, they called, I think they called uh, Stalin aside and told him that they have a new weapon that they are going to unleash on uh, Japan. Because Japan was a very unusual enemy. And Japan is an island. The Japan you know is actually called the home island home islands of Japan. I don't know if you have a map. I'll show you. Oh, yes. (laughs) 
But there are many other islands, little islands that are connected to Japan and they are all part of Japan. But Japan itself, yeah. Yeah. So that's the island. So that's the main island. But uh, you have to show down this way a bit. And when you show down there, you see Kyushu. Kyushu is down there. But you need to go down. Which is the main point you can enter. Can you see Kyushu? Has it appeared? That's on this one. All right. And then when you go down in the, in the sea, you see all the islands. Anyway, so in order, that they, you've got a bad map, you know. I don't know what's wrong up there. Because your map has not helped me at all. How many realize that we've not been helped at all? <laughs> now, Listen, I'm saying that because they realized that they were a very unusual enemy and that before coming to the main home islands, which is the one you just saw, they had to take the islands before because on some of those islands, they have, some of them were just soldiers and airports, airfields, runways, and planes. Then they have to possess those ones before. But when they went to invade them, small, small islands, you know, the Japan had no Japanese had no any aim than as many Americans should die with them as they also die. There's nothing like surrender or we have lost or we have won or whatever. We must all die. Together forever, we must die. Are you with me? So, they fought on many, many islands, but it was too horrible. Yes, there was, too, there was nothing like you will ever surrender, or there will be just you die. And when it's for me to die, the commander will commit suicide and everybody dies. So, they, too many people died. And uh, it was what helped them to decide that they were going to release the, for the first time a nuclear bomb, atomic bomb. So they told Stalin that, look, we have this. But they didn't know that Stalin knew already. <laughs> they, they, had, they knew everything already. So anyway, when they dropped the bomb on the people, all right, 80,000 people vanished in one second. Now, if you want to be safe from a nuclear bomb, you need to be a little distance away. Because it doesn't go, let's say, 100 miles. Like, I mean, sometimes up to six miles or seven miles. It depends on how powerful. So if you are a little distance, so if you know that it's coming to a cry, you can go towards Winneba or a bit away. But it's like the whole place will vanish. Yes. So, the current bombs are about 30 times more powerful than the one that they bomb. And they have plenty. Do you see? So, now because of this power, they are threatening the whole world. Well, the pandemic has ended. You don't even know where the corona has gone to. These days, we can't find him anywhere. Yeah, we have been searching for, for him. Whether Omicrons or this or that, we are not hearing anymore. Are you there? So, you find that we are afraid of the greatest force and power because uh, they are afraid. If we put one, they put one. It will take only 15 minutes. The America will have only 15 minutes notice before the bomb is there. Why? Because 
in America alone, they, they are nuclear bombs are on submarines. 70% of them are on submarines. The submarine can be outside our, where we fish for redfish outside here. It can be there in the waters. So it will launch from anywhere. So everywhere is near. Most of them are uh, in the submarines. Uh-huh. And so everywhere is possible. You see. So the people in Hiroshima, they didn't know, they never, they never knew anything. It just disappeared. Now I want to propose to you, aha, uh-huh, they found something. Ah, you see, Kyushu. So that was the first place they were going to invade. Now, that one, they never went there. They changed their mind. They fixed the invasion for September 1945. But after they suffered at Okinawa Island, before Okinawa and another, other, other islands there, Iwo Jima, but Okinawa was the last, they said, no, 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 no. It's not worth it. Because even the Okinawa, 250,000 people that now they have put in Kyushu about 900,000 Japanese soldiers to die. Yeah, yeah, ready to die. So they will die ah, until everybody is dead. So what I'm saying, that's why they said, no, if we put the bomb, it will be faster and it will be better. Now what I'm saying is that this is the great power that the whole world we are today at the brink of maybe something like that. Nobody knows because we don't know what. Every time it's like when it started in China, we didn't know what was happening. Uh, pandemic, pandemic. We don't know. Then before I realized, our airport was closed. And we heard of some as far north as whatever. Everything was there. So, but I believe that the greatest force, greater than nuclear, is faith. Yes. Why? Why do I say that? Because in Hebrews 11, it says that the world's were framed by the word of God. Through faith, we understand the world was created. But the verse that we read before in Matthew 17, it says that if you have only a seed of this faith, you can move a mountain. Are you there? A mountain. That's what a nuclear weapon is supposed to do. Move cities, move people, move whatever. But faith, I mean, Jesus has told us. So I think that if the scientists in our world were to take up faith and analyze and study it as much as Einstein studied the laws or the physics, we will be able to create a bigger force than they have created with a nuclear uh, weapon. You see, E is equal to MC squared. E is energy. But one of the things with the nuclear bomb is like it, the wind. I mean, just the wind, the force. That's the E. It's equal to MC squared. You see, M is the mass. So that means if you take just a small piece of meat here and you can accelerate, C C is what? The speed of light, which is very fast. So if we can, that is the theory, that if I take a small piece of meat like this and I can accelerate the molecules in it, the mass times to a certain speed, it will create a huge energy. That's it. E is equal to MC squared. Do you understand? Ask students, is it because of you that I'm talking? Those who did banking, those who did banking and all these type of things. So what, what he is trying to say is that even a small piece of meat or one KFC piece can turn into a nuclear weapon. That is, if he takes the mass of the chicken times the speed of light and move it to that speed 
Those of you who did graphic design and arts, all the art students, I hope you are getting it. Can move it up to create a big energy. Uh huh. And that's what they do. That's the nuclear weapon. So it's like they thought about it and they were able to do it as far back as 1945. Now, if we were to study faith, which can move mountains and put it in the sea, honestly, I'm sure that these people will come up with something more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Yes. But, of course, they are not men of faith. So we have faith. Amen. And now Jesus is saying that all you need is a seed of faith. If you have just a seed like a mustard seed of faith, that's a small amount, then, I mean, a big power will become available to you. So it's like energy E is equal to F, faith, something, a formula can come. Yes. Then before you realize the energy that can move a mountain has been released. I want only art students to clap. Only art science students you can rest. All art students should clap to show that you are impressed. Are art students clapping? Beautiful. Art students, I must be impressed. Because it, it is impressive. Amen. Amen. Now, so how many want to sow a seed of faith to release some power into what your problem is? So if, let's say, you are struggling with pornography, okay, you need some extra strength or power to push it away from you. Aha. Uh-huh. So if you do try, you are just using psychology or you are reading psychological books or keys, key facts on the internet and trying to use some ideas, some wisdom and so on, do you see, you have left out a very great power that you could also add to your struggle. Do you get it? And release a power to come and bear on something that disturbs you, that you need to go away. If you don't have a beloved and you want a beloved, yes, you can put on your makeup, your face, get hair, get a new dress, change your shape and everything. You get it? These are efforts. But I'm also telling you that you can add a seed of faith and it will release a big power that can even move a mountain. How much more move a brother? Something that can move a mountain. What about move a brother? Oh, wow. The brother will be standing on the mountain and the mountain will be moving. So the fact that you have not added faith to the efforts you are making shows that you have left out a bigger power that would have really helped to move things in a certain way. So I'm just trying to say that try a seed of faith in addition to all the things you are doing. Try and add to it a seed of faith, which faith times whatever M something squared is equal to big power in your life. If you are looking for a job or you want to apply for a visa or you want to go to America, okay, instead of trying to cook up bank statements and trying to do so many, get letters of whatever and show so many things, which is good that you, I mean, do whatever is right and it's helpful. I'm saying that there is another power that I think you haven't added to this particular struggle of your life and it is called the power that is released through the seed of faith. 
When Jesus said to Kenneth Hagin that anytime somebody is sick, pray for the person and that it affects the outcomes of whatever it is. I always remember that no matter the medicines you are taking, prayer also has a certain effect. Like the spiritual thing is real. Are you with me? Yes. We are going to see Jesus very soon and we are going to be surprised how real he was, he is, and has always been. If you are struggling at home with your father, your mother, your relationships, whatever, financially, it's good for you to use psychology and other things you are using. It's nice. Do you get it? But there is another big power that can move mountains more than the nuclear things which we, are, we, we can sense the threat from today in the world. Okay? How many want to introduce some nuclear power? Uh, not super nuclear. It's more than nuclear. Faith power into whatever case or whatever issue there is. Amen. And I believe that Whatever issue is facing you or fighting you, a year from now, you'll be looking back and trying to remember the details of the case that was on you. You see, because you, you, you wonder what it was like not to have a beloved. You'll be saying, so what was it like? I used to do this. I used to do. Wow. Wow. So, how shall I sow a seed of faith? How many want to know how to sow a seed of faith, add some faith into whatever you are doing, okay? Number one, and these are just a Bible study for a short few minutes, and um, number one, sow a seed of obedience because faith is obedience and obedience is faith I can't get away from that statement all through the Bible you see that faith is equated with obedience you cannot have a certain amount of power in your life until and unless you have a certain amount of obedience. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, at Tabera and verse 22, and Massa at Kibroth Hatava, you proved the Lord. Likewise, when the Lord sent you to Kadesh Barnea, saying, go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled. And you believed him not, and nor hearkened to his voice. And what does the next verse say? You did not believe, you have been rebellious against the Lord since I knew. Now, they, they were defeated in battle because they, were, they did not believe God and they did not obey. So, obedience is faith. Many scriptures like this one we just read, it says, you believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. You don't believe or listen. And then in 1 Peter 2, verse 7 and 8, it says, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which are disobedient. So the opposite of believing is disobedient. Unto you who believe, He is precious. But to them which are disobedient, do you see, the stone which the builders disallow, the same has become the head of the corner. In other words, you you are either believing or disobedient. Because we say you are either believing or unbelieving. No, you are either believing or disobedient. Are you there? That's what it means. So when you don't believe, you are disobedient. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive for an inheritance, by faith, 
he did what? Obeyed. <laughs> By faith, when he was called to go out, do you see? He obeyed and went out. He obeyed and went out, not knowing whither he went. He didn't know where he was going. He just had faith and obeyed. So when you have faith, you start obeying. So in order to demystify the faith, I have stated that and showing it to you from the scripture that faith is obedience and obedience is faith. Uh, Obedience, obeying God's word and obeying instructions, obeying your father, obeying of any sort, do you see, reveals faith in the person. That is why Adam and Eve's disobedience to God was as seen as a real letdown in which they, they, they showed the lack of confidence in God. Are you there? Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted and to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She did not obey. She received not correction. So she does not obey, does not receive instruction, and she trusted not in the Lord, and she drew not near to God. This is a bad girl, a very some way person. She obeyed not, she received not correction, and she trusted not in the Lord. Obeying is the same as trusting. Obeying is the same as trusting. When you don't obey, reveals you don't trust. You don't have faith. You don't believe. So when you want to sow a seed of faith or add faith to whatever situation you are in, okay, think carefully how you can sow a seed of obedience. Obedience. Think of all the different things that have been told to you. Think of it. You know, when, sometimes when I'm waiting on God, and I try to remember the things that I feel God has told me so that I do them. Do you get it? It's a seed of obedience. It's a seed of faith. Then I immediately add a small amount of power into my life. When I look at the ministry, what we are experiencing or we have seen in the church, right, has obviously some superhuman power at work. That's what I'm trying to say. There's obviously some supernatural power that has kept us and is keeping us and some kind of power, grace, I don't know what word you want to say, that is helping the church to continue and carry on because it's made of normal human beings. Do you see? One of the things which brings into play a power that is invisible, I'm telling you, is bigger than the nuclear that these people are threatening. It's bigger because it can move a whole mountain. And we should go visit some mountains. Which mountain would you like to see? Nepal. We're going to Nepal to look at Mount Everest. At least if we look at it, you say that you, you'll be there. That's where you see how majestic, how great some of these mountains are. And for somebody to say that I can move a whole mountain, I wonder if a nuclear weapon can move a mountain. I don't know. I don't know if it can, because they test them in the, sometimes under the water, and then they also test them in, uh, uh, on, the, on the desert, Mexico, New Mexico. They test it in the desert. desert. All these countries have barren places and wildernesses that they use to test. Now, check yourself in your life and ask yourself, How can I introduce obedience, a seed of obedience into my things? Yes. Unrelated obediences. 
Yes. Think of the different things you hear, have heard at camps, in church, even this morning. You've heard that a seed of money is a memorial. Think of the different things God has said to you. You find that your life lacks a certain wind pushing, a certain power. Because you lack the invisible force that is pushing. You know, one of the first times I went to New York, you know, when we go, took off from where Holland, Amsterdam or London or somewhere, and we flew to New York, it, it was about nine hours. Nine hours. Now, when I was going back, I looked at the time and I said, the time is wrong. Because we were taking off from New York around 12. By 5 or 6, we were, we'll be in London. But when we were coming, it was about 9 hours. This one was like a 5 hours, 6 hours. I said, ah, why? And then, I don't know who explained to me, the pilot or whatever, but I came to find out that there is a wind that you cannot see. Blowing over the Atlantic Ocean. When a plane is coming this way, it's flying against that power. And it takes so much longer to fly against the wind. That it changes the time completely. Yeah. And when you are coming back, the wind is supporting you. And it pushes you so much faster. And you get from America across that same Atlantic Ocean, five hours you are there. May there be an invisible power forcing you forward and pushing you ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ. How to get such powers which are invisible to be boosting you up and boosting you forward continually. Is by deploying the seed, a seed of faith, a seed of obedience. Try obedience. Try obedience. Try obedience. Try a seed of obedience. You know, there's a scripture which says, Be not wise in your own conceits. Don't be too smart. <laughs> Try obedience. It's people who think they are smart. Do you see? Who miss the blessing of the invisible power. Because they are too smart to trust. And just flow. Yeah. The things that are written in the books, you read it, but it's, you are too clever to obey. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. So, give yourself to the Lord and try obedience. Those of you who even struggle with your parents, try obeying your father instead of being a rebellious child. Try to come out of that group. Just try. It's a seed of faith. It's a seed of obedience. Yeah. Very little something. Our people don't know what obedience is. <laughs> wow. Obedience it's a wild thing. It's a very wild uh, power. You know? Are you there? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. You know, everybody has his own eyes. What you see. So that's why you say things like, We are on the ground. We are on the ground. We are, we are, we are, we are students. We are young people. We are 21st century boomers. Sorry. Your time is past. That is what it means by being wise in your own eyes. Or when we preach, you say you are a man. That is why you are preaching that way. You are a man. That's why you are preaching that way. If you were normal or not a, just a man, you wouldn't say what you are saying. You are a man. Yes. You are, you are speaking naturally. And that prevents you from obeying God. It's your own analysis. I'll do this and this. In my case, it will not be like that. And that's all. So everybody here has, I mean, I am sure you can scan your mind. Now, how do you know sometimes God is telling you to obey? Sometimes when something is being preached, you feel something comes to your mind, it comes to your mind, it comes to your mind again, it keeps coming to you. You know, maybe I should do this. Or maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do this. Do that. Do what? That. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's going to make a big difference in your life. So a seed of obedience. And then you may be flying and you see that, that an invisible wind starts to move you and reduce the time and change you from another person who is struggling against the wind and against the power. In the name of Jesus. Are you excited about becoming an obeyer of the word? Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Now, Number two, sow a seed. Before I tell you the next seed, which is a seed of, you know, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, just because we are on obedience, I just want to throw in something right there. How many would like to revenge on Satan, something bad he has done to you? Hmm? 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. All right. It says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty. They are mighty weapons. This is another topic how to release an atomic weapon on the enemy. Oh, yes. Mighty weapons. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing. Okay. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience. Now notice, I'm talking about revenge. Verse 6. Beautiful. Having readiness to revenge. So God is showing you how to revenge. How to revenge. How to revenge. What Satan has done to you, pa? How to revenge. And how do you revenge? Look at it. How do you revenge all disobedience? When your obedience is fulfilled. By being very obedient, you revenge on wickedness that has been done against you. So obedience is your best bet for revenge. Oh yes. Oh yes. Revenging is by obedience. When you, you release a power and the power changes your situation just because you are obedient. Not because you are clever. Not because you are good or smart or wise, but you are obedient. Obedience is a wild thing because it's a type of faith. Yes. So I pray that I, I have a message to share with you on how to attack the devil personally. Yes. And this is one of them. It's you revenge. You take your vengeance. Yeah. By deciding to be very obedient 
Yeah. They say this, you jump, say this, you jump. And what he has told you, go and search for all the news. He said, I should do this, I said, I should do this, I should do this. That's all. Oh, yes. Now, number two. Sow a seed of preparation. A seed of what? Preparation. Preparation. Because faith loves preparation and faith is preparation. And I'm going to show you from the Bible that preparation, preparing for things is a seed of faith. You're actually sowing a seed every time you are preparing for something. I'll show you. How many want me to show you? Let's look at Mr. Noah. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen as yet, huh? moved with fear and prepared. Did what? Prepared. Because he was a man of faith and he wanted to exercise faith. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world. Faith is preparation. Faith is to prepare. When you have faith, you prepare for eternity. It's people who don't believe. They don't prepare for heaven. They are only preparing for earth. They are preparing for this age, for that age, for that age, for that age, because they don't have faith. Faith loves preparation, and faith is preparation, and faith makes you prepare. And when you want to sow a seed of faith to introduce something powerful into your life, eh, you move into preparation for the things God has told you to do. By faith, Noah moved with fear, being one of God, of things that were not yet seen. To the saving of his house. Imagine uh, building a, a, a boat in the middle of nowhere. Eh? <laughs> when the people ask you why, you say it's going to rain one day. <laughs> and you have rooms for animals. And details of what God told you in the vision. He gave you a vision. Prepare all these for one day I will have animals in your life. One day I will bless you with a lion. Really? I will bless you with tigers. I will bless you with antelopes. Prepare. I hear President Clinton went to Oxford University. I don't know if it's true. Went to Oxford. All this, he had in mind that one day he will be the president. That's why they go to certain schools, Eton and so on. They go there because they, it's, it, it, it's one, you just have to mention it. I was here, I was here, I was here. I was at Lagos. Oh, yes. It's a preparation. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Faith loves preparation. What has God told you? Huh? The United States Coast Guard, their motto is Semper Paratus, always prepared. Yes, they are always prepared. That's their motto. We are ready for any storm, anything that will come, whatever it is like. Semper Paratus, always ready and prepared. Are you there? Men without faith are men without preparation. What are you preparing for? You are preparing for 70 years on this earth. Huh? Why don't you prepare for thousands of years that are going to come? Where we'll be in eternity and we'll be there forever. It's just a matter of time. We'll not be in this world. This world is not our home. 
Men of faith, young boys and young girls of faith, they give themselves to the preparation of the gospel. Preparing to preach. When you know God is going to use you, you spend time preparing. You prepare. You fast. You spend the whole day. One day I passed by somebody's weekday service. And there was nobody in the, in the church service. But I remembered when I used to have weekday service, Tuesday. I fasted till I became sick. Fasting and praying for my weekday service. And I stand with anointing. There are many messages you can hear them. Faith loves preparation. What's your preparation for? People don't prepare. You are eating sandwiches, eating meat pies, filling your stomach with mortar guineas, watching Netflix. Instead of preparing, faith loves preparation. A seed of preparation is a seed of faith. A seed to prepare your life and prepare yourself for God and for God to use you. For God to carry you with his spirit. In prayer, it shows that you are sowing a seed of faith into your natural desire to serve God. And that seed of preparation releases the power that can move mountains and move members and move people and move things. Faith loves preparation. Oh yes. A girl who says she wants to marry and you, are, you have faith, you prepare. Marriage is different from boyfriends and girlfriends. Marriage has nothing to do with hair has nothing to do with hairstyles. It has nothing to do with a lot of things. Those things have to do with what you see in church and what you see when people come out into the public. But in the real life, all those things are not there. And unfortunately, you have so many sisters who all they know is how to dress, how to do their hair, how to do their face, how to do whatever. But a simple meat pie you cannot make. A simple meat pie. You cannot make. You buy ovens and cookers with an oven and you never use the oven because you don't know how to do anything. But you bought it. Yes. Oh yes. Faith loves preparation. I remember one lady, she was from the Caribbean and uh, I met her and um, she married a Ghanaian. When I met her, I was told that her shito is the best. Her shito is the best. I said, how does a Caribbean lady know how to make it? No, every groundnut soup, this stew, this whatever, everything. Faith loves preparation. Faith loves preparation. She prepared herself for the marriage. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Her she thought was the best. And you, you are from Akimoda, but you don't know how to make Anything like Sito. Eh? Hmm. One day, a brother told his wife, he said, I know you are a Ghanaian and to you as a Ghana girl, food is very important to you. But he told her, I want you to understand that for me, 
Sex is what is important. It's not food. <laughs> when she was given that message, she said, okay, I will prepare myself. She went into higher level preparation. She was not so concerned about granite soups and palm nut soups and other things. I said, faith loves preparation. Amen. Are you excited about? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, number three, I think I'm just going to give you three points today. Faith loves or is loves adjustments. Adjustment. Yes. Genesis 17, verse 21. But my covenant will I establish with thee, with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time next year. Amen. Are you there? Yes. yes. Then Genesis 25, verse 5. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, he gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived 103 score and 15 years eh? 175 and Abraham gave up the coast died in a good old age an old man full of years years and was gathered to his people are you a man of faith God told Abraham it's Isaac now in those days Polygamy was very well accepted as a very key form of wisdom. The wise way to live. Abraham had other wives and other children. But God, God said to Abraham, this is one, is the promise. And because of that, he adjusted his will. And he gave everything he had to Isaac. The others, he called and said, come. Here's a carton of milo. Take it this way. Go this way. He called the other one. Here's a carton of milk. Go this way. He called the other one. He said, because God had told him this. is a... Normally, let me tell you something about whales. When people are making their whales, they look at even sometimes their age and then their children. So this one is a small one. I will die before this one finishes school. So they, make, they give more things to the young ones. Then as they grow also, they start that they look at the daughters. And they say, ah, this one, somebody will come and marry her, disturb her heart, disturb her life. So then they start to give things to the daughters. That's how people will. Or somebody said, this is my sister's daughter. Because I'm sure of my sister that she's my sister and that the child is her child. I'm sure of that. But my own wife, the child, I, I can't be so sure. So, I mean, different things that people have in their... Are you with me? But this one was unusual. God tells you, this child is what I... I'm going to bless this child. And he believes it. And he starts to make adjustments according to his faith. Now, when God calls you, you have to make adjustments to what he is telling you to do. Amen. 
You have to make adjustments according to what you can perceive. And a person who is not prepared to make adjustment does not believe and does not know and does not care. So when God calls you, adjust your whole life. Change everything. Change your tradition. Maybe you give to your sister's daughter. Maybe you give to your daughter. You had plan to give to your daughters. I'm sure Abraham had some daughters. Uh, he had this, he had that, he had maybe young ones whom I don't know what, how their education will be paid for. But God told him, Isaac, Isaac, your second born, not even the first born. It's like, wow, second born is the main one that I have changed everything. To change and to change your life and to adjust and to change according to your faith is a seed that you have sowed and introduced. All my, all my friends are adjusted. When I was growing up, my friends equally were half castes and not, not from Ghana per se. When I grew up, my best friend was from Holland and Switzerland. And my other best friend was, they are from different, because my, your, your mother's friends will be, their children will become your friends. And my mother's friends were also Europeans who had also married Ghanaians. And we were all in Ghana. We used to play together all the time. So those were the people I knew. When God called me, my whole life was adjusted according to my call. And I came to have different people all together. You have not adjusted even one of your friends. Devils are your friends up to today. Dragons are your friends up to today. There's no adjustment to your life. It shows that there is no faith. You are struggling with the same sins, the same thing, but you have not and will not make even an adjustment. You look at some of the television channels and things that are coming to your room. Even the, perhaps you should even destroy the television or destroy the whole thing that can bring certain things to you. To you, you not even make an adjustment. I'm making this change or this adjustment in my life because of this. You say there's nowhere to sleep in your house, so you are fornicating because you, there's nowhere outside. There's nowhere to stay. Faith is obedience. And a seed of adjustment must take place in your life. There's nothing like doing whatever you used to do before and continuing in Christian. There's nothing like that. You can never have the same life you used to have in the past. If your life is not adjusted, I'm so sorry. It's not possible. You can't maintain the same things. You have to adjust your whole family, friends, whatever. Oh, yes. To adjust to the current realities of what God is saying. And when you make that adjustment, a great power. Okay. When Joseph was in the prison, he had not shaved for about eight years. Can you imagine? When he was called from the prison, he shaved. Pharaoh is calling me, I will adjust how I look and everything. No adjustment. Because you don't believe. Most of the girls, Ghana girls, you tell them about sex, teaching, marriage, and so they don't really believe it. So they don't adjust. Oh, the hair will be adjusted. The eyes will be adjusted. You see girls, you are working for the last six weeks. You have not washed your hair. When I say wash your hair, like water has not your, your scalp. Because of your special hair that you, you, you've put on, the hair is the head is even smelly and you you see that they tie the head to the nonsense degree the whole head is going to come off and you see they i mean they adjust they've done so many things but to adjust other forms of hair and other things that are necessary and to do whatever adjustment must be made oh they cannot do nothing They don't believe it. They don't believe it. 
They don't believe it. Adjust to, to for Abraham power with his big family just to take one and give everything to one and leave the rest. So many accusations could have come against him. You, are, you, you know that you have other children. Eh? You know that there are others. Eh? You can't leave this small, small boy. You've given birth. No, I saw a man who was 80 something. His child was like two years old. 80, 80 years old. Two, two years. Yes. We had to get involved to pay the school fees. This is a child like this, two years old. You are 80. So Abraham, I'm sure he had some two years and three year children. Hallelujah. Now, something wonderful. The fourth seed. Yes, it's a seed. It's a seed of traveling. Seed of what? Traveling. Traveling. To travel from your home. Some of you are saying, unless a bus comes from me. Unless a bus comes from me, I cannot cannot go anywhere. (laughs) But every time you travel and you move for God, it's a powerful seed. When I look at all the things that God has done, I can see that many times it's a seed of traveling. When I traveled, it was an act of faith. Yes. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, the seed of traveling, get out of your country. Wow. Get what? (laughs) Get out of your country. Get out. Get out of your country. Wow. Get out of your country. And from your relatives, beautiful, and from your father's house, to a land I will show you later. So for now, just get out. Is it not amazing? Faith makes you move. How many are going to say to the Lord, Lord, as far as I'm in this city, on Sunday, I can be in church. Raise your hand. That's an act of faith. Yes, it's an act of faith. And God sees your act of faith. That your faith has been able to make you move. We have some crusades coming up in Nakbanduri. In Gambaga. In Savelugu. In where? Gushegu. In where? Cheriponi. Cheriponi. Saboba. Nalerigu. Now I'm asking you, what do you think I need from there? Will it make me famous to go to Nalerigu? Think about it. What am I going to get from there? Faith. Faith. My belief in God, my belief makes me to go, to go and stay in these places, to preach to the people there. Only faith. There is no other thing that can make me go there because I don't know anybody there. Oh, yes. Faith is a wild thing. It, 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 it introduces a power. It introduces supernatural Things into your life. Yeah. Because it's the power that can move a mountain. A power comes even into your finances, which are unrelated. You ask yourself, how do the relation to this and money? What's the relation to this and marriage? What's the relation to this and my problem? I also can't tell you, but I can tell you that when you do things that are acts of faith, acts of seed of traveling, Abraham got up and started moving. Beautiful. No wonder he became, look up to today. His children are everywhere. Yeah, all of us are children of Abraham. So a seed of traveling wherever God wants 
you too. And the final one is the seed of speed. Yeah. Genesis 17, verse 23. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with his money, every male among them, and circumcised them on the self same day. Or when? When did he circumcise them? The day God told him about circumcision. He just organized a circumcision, which, which is a very serious thing. Let's do it now. Get up and come and say, I had a vision. God said I should cut this and that. And everybody look at you. Are you serious of what you are saying? Are you serious? And we are, he says we are doing it today. Everybody, I will, I will start myself. And you can imagine Abraham circumcising himself. Huh? And after that, he gave birth with more children. It was working still after. Yes. <laughs> you know, one day a brother was complaining about his beloved. Or I don't know what it was, but he said that he came to visit her at around 10 o'clock. And he said he was hungry. And the sister said, no problem. I'm on it. No, by 6 o'clock in the evening, they have not finished. The food was not ready. (laughs) And it was becoming a, a crisis. You get what I'm saying? I don't know what she was doing. You can also tell me what she was doing. Maybe you can tell me what she was doing. The slowness to produce the food shows that you don't believe. When the person comes at 10 o'clock and says, Charlie, I'm hungry, pa. The brother explained how he waited, gnashing, weeping and gnashing his teeth. So, the speed. Yes. Your speed shows you believe. If you ever relate with somebody and you expect the person to move promptly and the person moves. Huh? Well, the person could have done. It's, it's two different. It have, they have different meanings. Even though both. I said, Am I not here? Is it not what you said? Have I done it or have not done it? Have I? Yeah. You see, I don't want to go further, but I'm telling you, your speed is reveals faith. God says, do this. This is what I'm doing now. 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 Amen. So, introduce today into your life. Seed number one is what? Seed of what? Seed of obedience, number two. Seed of preparation, number three. So a seed of adjustment. Amen. So a seed of adjustment. Number four, a seed of traveling. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But you see, if you travel and you don't adjust your life, maybe all your life is watching movies. And when you travel to go on the mission, you don't adjust and stop watching the movies and do other things. You get it? Don't expect the power. Yeah. And the last seed is what? The seed of speed. Yes. So a seed of speed. How many want to run after what something God said to you? Run after it. Do it. And you will see power in your life. You know, I was in um, Niger. When I felt the Lord was leading me to start to leave the Kodesh and to start and to just leave the Kodesh and to move on. So from Niger, I went to Burkina. And when I was at Burkina, I felt more clearly I should. I should do it. And then I came to Accra. The first thing I did was I came to Legon. First thing, I said, 
I arrived in the church and I said, I'm here. I'm now your pastor. Just a few people at Legon Hall Chapel. And I said, next week Sunday, I'll give you the name of the church. I will not tell you the name. They, they thought it was a joke. Because I've come from Burkina. Speed. Oh yes, that's how we are here now. You are all wearing your uniforms and First Love Church is a different church and all that. It's, it's, it's a miracle. But you see, speed introduces a wind, a tailwind, and pushes you with some power because you are obeying God and you are obeying with speed and with adjustment and with traveling and movement and everything. All those things are acts of faith because faith is your life. We live by faith. So the life, these are acts of life. Traveling is an act of life. Adjustment is an act of life. Speed is an act of your life. Obedience is an act in your life. These acts are your life. They just live by his faith. So how your life is, is your faith. It's not saying, I believe, I receive, I believe, I receive. No, no, your life is faith. Yes. So the adjustment is in your life. The speed you are moving is how your life is. Your traveling is your life. Your movement is your life. Your obedience is your life. So your life is your faith. Faith is your life and your life is your faith. This is my life. I've lived my life serving God. This is my life. I've lived my life preaching. This is my life. I've lived my life doing what I know how to do best to serve the Lord. It's my life. It's my faith. So I pray that from today, the seed of faith, just a grain, will be powerful in your life. And everything about you is going to change. That's why if we take an offering now, don't give your offering without believing. If you think you are giving your money for somebody to use, don't give your money to be a waste. The church is not poor. I can tell you that from the word go. Is this poor? Is here not nicer than your house? No, I'm asking a personal question. Is here not nicer than your house? And when the air conditioner comes on, you even start to come here to cool down. You wait and see. Is this television not nicer than your TV in your house? Only do the things that have faith in them. Yes. And you're going to start seeing that invisible power pushing, 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 pushing. Lift your holy hands. Thank you, Father, for your blessing. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your spirit. Thanks a million. Oh, yes. Thanks a million for men of faith that you are giving to us. Oh, yes. Take our lives, Lord, and let our lives be lives of faith. Let your life be a life beautifully dedicated to God and to faith in the Lord. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you want Jesus to change your life, you want to be born again, I want to say, Pastor, please pray with me. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand and let me pray with you. You want to say, take my life, Lord Jesus. I want to give my life to you. God bless you. Father, thank you for all those who want to be born again this afternoon. I give their heart to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. Help me to know Jesus. I want to turn around. I want to be born again. If you are here like that, lift your hand up right now. Thank you. Thank you. I see all your hands. If you've lifted your hand, come to me in the front here very quickly.
say this prayer with me. Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, make me a new person. I confess I am a sinner. Today, I want to make adjustments. I want to obey you and follow you. Save me, wash me, cleanse me, make me a new person. I give my heart to Jesus Christ today. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I want to give you one of my books here. Please follow the sign. Follow me. It's a pastor who is holding that and is taking you to a good place. Amen. Put your hands together for them.